It all began with the MOOCs up 37. Five months ago, I would spent my entire day just making space-like sounds. During that period, my new studio wasn't built yet, so I just learned from a lot of trial and error through analog gear. That's when I landed on my guitar pedal and Moog chain to create a sound with a technique that I've never done before. I'll take you through the structure of the song, the synth workflow, the drums and groove pattern, and the coloring of the song. Just like all my videos, I'm not going to show anyone how I did the sound designing, but I'll be showing how I made the Collider Synth and its workflow. I'll also be showing you how you can apply that method on your own DAW. You don't need an analog gear to do this. The first thing that I did was flatten all the sounds. Um, I made the switch from Mac to PC, so I had to flatten all the channels. I'll do my best to describe all the sounds. The first sound that I made was this chord progression. This sound was made on Context Library, the Giant. It has a preset in it, which is a reverse piano, and I thought it was perfect. And then it was just a big rabbit hole trying to figure out how to make this a big, wide spectrum of sounds. Let's go over the structure really quickly. The song is in D-sharp minor, 150 BPM in 4-4. On paper, it makes no sense, but it ended up working out. I also wanted to kind of break the rules. The opening of the song is eight bars. Then the initial intro happens, which is 16 bars long. And then the melodic break and pre-drop, which is also 16. And then the build, again, is also 16. The first section of the drop is only eight bars. And then the second section is 16, and it ended up working out. Bridges essentially is just a copy paste from the intro, but it's now eight bars long. So is the melodic uh, break section, so is the build as well. So everything is cut in half. To compensate the loss of bars in the bridge, pre-drop, and build, the first section of the second drop, 16 bars long. Also copy pasted the second phrase of the first drop into the second drop. The outro is 32 bars long, it's because I started having fun with the collider synth. The opening of this song is my representation of a collider, and then I introduce the piano. So I decided to have a steady quarter note pattern in the back, the low end. Then finally, the release from the intro happens in the pre-drop, giving it more of an emotional chord progression in the piano side. The pre-drop section has the giant piano sound library from Contact with the reverse piano. And then is the absence sound. And then I wanted to add a lush pad in the back. The strings, they're helping to fill the entire spectrum again. There are violas. There's a little bit of pitch bending happening in the violas. I had to modulate them uh, via my keyboard. And then there's the low end of uh, brass section. I made this sad morning synth. There's another sound that I added in the back, which was keeping the steady beat on the thirds, which was the sound from the Moog Sub 37 I added. It was a feedback sound with a lot of heavy reverb. And then following that, there is uh, the lo-fi Moog Sub 37 lead that I made. Which slowly opens up to the build. There's an octave higher and an octave lower. All these synths are descending and fading away while the collider synth that I had worked on makes an appearance. And the reverb feedback synth that I took from the recording keeps a steady third. The low end Moog sound also fades away. A new sound that I add in there, which is the feedback from the delay that I was doing in the collider synth, and it fit perfectly and it sounds like this.
There are short impulses with reverb and then a sub. And it started to come together and I really like that part so that sounded really good to me. Throughout the song you're going to hear the name Sub 37 quite frequently. Hopefully no one gets tired of it. The first phrase of the song, this massive synth that I created, it's frozen and flat and I can't really show you how I made it. I thought it sounded a little too dry so I had a shimmer effect on top of it. I think it was way too bright. I wanted to give it a little more of a dirt on the mid section. The H bang synths, which is essentially head bang synths. They're doing the ones and threes. At this point, the collider synths are still active. They're also helping out in the mid frequencies. Uh, the sub is following what the main lead synths are doing. It still didn't have the bite that I wanted, so I added the distorted sound that I had. The second phrase of the song is also massive, but there's two of them layered. And the dun-dun that I actually did a while ago in BLT. These sound very dry. I want to compensate that by adding delay, the Haas effect, uh, a lot of shimmer as well. So it winds up the sound. The sub is following what the synths are doing uh, with the pitch bend. But again, I wanted to add a distorted mid bass on top of it. Throughout this second phrase, the Moog synth is still active. The headbang synth wide side is still on and it's doing its thing. I think this drop was a little tedious and it was surgical, but it ended up becoming something that I had never made before. I like the way it sounds. It's very heavy and it's in your face. It doesn't sound bad at all. All the essential parts are back in the intro now. The piano, the absence synth, strings, brass, the sad morning sound and then a copy paste of the pre-drop, also eight bars long. And then there's the second build, eight bar loop. But one thing that is constant in this is the feedback. Two bars before each drop, I've done something different, which was the Moog Sub 37 Collider Synth that I keep talking about. The first drop synths make an appearance again, but this time there's a, a sample that I made a while ago. But this synth changes in the second phrase. Now there's new one and third synth to help the backbone of the track again. There's a couple of re-spaced fills. The Collider synth is still going at it. The second phrase of the second drop is a copy paste, so we have already covered that in the first drop. And then to end, I do one sad morning sound, and then the giant feedback on top of it, and a lot of effects. The drums are not introduced until the build. There's just uh, one kick pattern, the most typical dubstep groove, which is the ones and threes. The only juicy part of this is the percussion section, which kind of fill the emptiness of the song. The first initial kick in the build is lo-fied. It's not overwhelming. In the back, the percussions are keeping the steady thirds. And it's a fade in build of the kick. Clap. 
and then an 808 snare. In the drop, the kick and snare are doing the one and threes. We already know how that sounds. The percussion is also helping the snare to come out and give it more of a character. The groove is 16 note swing. So all together, it really sounds clean. Percussion fill at the very end, which is the snare. Other than that, this drum pattern is the most simplest thing. Now in the second drop, the only difference in the drums is that the first eight bars of the drums are not swung. From there on, it's swung until the outro. Now the effects section is typically the very last part of my process. Think of it as a finishing touch or coloring of your track. Without these effects, this song would sound very thin. The most that's happening is in the intro, and then after that, the big ones are in the build. This is when everything comes together, and effects really helped out this song to give it a finished product. These effect impulses happen throughout the song, especially in the bridge as well. There's a lot of ups and downs. Now, what is this Collider synth I keep talking about? A while ago, I made a patch called Collider on my Moog Sub 37. So I added a guitar delay pedal with the tape delay function on it. So every time I changed the time, it would do different pitches. And to complete the chain of the guitar pedals, I had Ibanez Fuzz and the DS-01 distortion by Bose. And these were the results. Most of these sounds I didn't get to use because they were so long and I had, to, I had to sit down here and chop them up and see which ones I liked. This synth barely had any post-processing besides EQ and a little bit of compression. And it sounds really good uh, just by on its own. The post-processing is mostly done in the recording. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I was going to show you how you can make the Collider synth just within your DAW. So I've got Erosion, which is the fuzz kind of effect that I was trying to look for. Saturator, in this case I'm using the delay in Ableton. Set to repitch, the dry wet is all the way 100%. The limiter is just making sure it doesn't peak right now. But once you play the sound, you can move the time. It's acting like a tape delay, where it will make the sound either speed up or slow down. I loved breaking down the song for you guys. I hope you learned something from it. Check out my latest EP, Demons in Denial, on Never Say Die Records. Let me know what other songs you want me to deconstruct. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.